Hello everyone, it's Sam. Welcome back to A Life of Lit. So, today I'm finally filming my bookshelf tour. I've gotten a lot of books um, since my bookshelf organization video when I put these shelves together. So, things have changed a little bit since that video. Um, okay, so a few things about my shelves in general. These are the Billy um, IKEA bookshelves. I love them. I have the three like wider ones and then the one skinny one. I organize my books kind of sort of by genre-ish. Each like shelf is almost always one genre, but then if that genre took more than one shelf, I kind of spaced those shelves out to kind of intermix things, especially because I also kind of sort of organize them by like height and paperback versus hardback light versus dark um just to kind of intersperse all the different colors and heights and things so it doesn't look like two what i didn't want was like one whole case would be like bright and light and contemporary and then a whole case of like fantasy and dark books so i tried to kind of space it out we'll see um i've also gotten a lot of new books since my um organization book shelf video so that one I actually filmed back in December when I first got these shelves. Um, I only posted it like a couple of weeks ago, but I've gotten a lot of books since then. We had Christmas with my in-laws. We had, um, my birthday is coming up in two weeks. So I've gotten some books already for that and I've bought myself some books. So I've probably added like 50 books since that video. Um, so I did end up having to move quite a few things around in order to kind of make them fit. I have had to start taking some decorations off um, I used to have a lot more plants on this shelf, but they don't really fit anymore. Um, so I'm kind of making the decision of whether or not I want to get another shelf and be able to put the plants back on or whether I would rather just take the plants off. Um, I haven't really made that decision yet. We'll see. But this might take a hot minute, so let's go ahead and just get started. Okay, so this is kind of an overview of the room. This is actually our <laughs> dining room. So my husband and I live in a one bedroom apartment right now. So this was kind of the only wall space that I really had to put this many shelves. Um, so this is over here. This is where I'm kind of thinking of adding another shelf or two, but I haven't decided yet. That is the cart of uncertainty. We will talk about that. Um, and then these are the main shelves. That is our dining room table. There are no chairs because the chairs end up all over the house um, because I use them to stand on <laughs> to reach things. Um, and they honestly, like we usually have at least two chairs at the table, but they both had stuff sitting on them. So I just moved them for the video. But here are the shelves and we are going to start up at the top and go from there. Okay, just kidding. I decided to start with the card of uncertainty and get that out of the way. So I've been calling this my card of uncertainty because it's not a TBR card. Um, and it's not like, I don't count these books. I have a spreadsheet of every book that I own and whether I've read it or not and all these stats about it and everything. I don't put these books on that spreadsheet. Um, so let's just go through from top to bottom. So up top here, we have some bookstagram props, some fairy loot things that I haven't figured out what to do with yet, um, some random things like that, and then my most recent book that I DNF'd, which is The Woman in the Window. And then we have two shelves, let's see if I can move this down, so we have two double stacked shelves here. Um, these are kind of a mix of things. So these books over here are books that I DNF'd and I haven't decided if I'm going to try it again or if I'm just going to get rid of them. So they sit here for now. These books over here and a lot of these down here are books that I have been given or found at a thrift store. Um, and it's usually part of a series where I don't own the first book yet. So I can't start the series, but I needed a place to just kind of put the random books that I own from series, but don't own the first book or I'm not really sure if I want to read it, but it was given to me. Um, so they are double stacked. So I would assume there's probably about 50 books between the two of these, but I don't count them on my book spreadsheet because I just, most of them, I don't know if I'm ever going to read. Um, 
and I just haven't decided if I'm gonna get rid of them yet. I do go through this pretty regularly and make that decision and decide whether it's gonna stay or whether I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. If I decide to get rid of it, I just put it in, um, in my classroom for my students to read because even if I'm not gonna read it, some of them might. So yeah, this is, these are two Throne of Glass novels. I know I need to read this series. I love Sarah J Maas, but um, I just have Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash. So I don't own the first one. I found this one at Ollie's for like $3. And then I found this one at a book fair also for like $3. So I have both of these, but I don't have the rest of the series yet. So until I get at least the first book, they're gonna stay over here. This is a book one of my students recommended to me, but um, I actually found it in my classroom in like books that were given to me for my classroom. Um, but we didn't have the first one. So I'm keeping the second one here for now, just to remind me that I need the first one. So that's kind of how this cart works. It's just kind of a mess, a conglomeration of books that I'm not ready to get rid of, but not, not sure, not committed to reading them yet. So that's that. All right, so I have to hold my phone, so I hope this isn't too shaky. Um, so up top here we have, those are a box of puzzles, um, and then I have some Harry Potter books. So I have this incredible edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone that I love. This box holds um, all seven Harry Potter books. I got those for Christmas like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, and then I have the Tales of Beetle Bard, Quidditch Through the Ages, Fantastic Beasts, um, the unofficial Harry Potter character compendium and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So this is kind of like my Harry Potter shelf up here. Um, and then across the rest of the top, I have my boxes for my wands back there. Um, and then I have these boxes across the top here that all of my, like some books that I got for Christmas like came in these boxes and stuff and I don't know what people do with these boxes. I don't like the books in them on the shelf but like am I allowed to get rid of these? <laughs> I felt really bad throwing them away so they just ended up on top here but um can someone like give me permission to get rid of them because I really don't want them. <laughs> so there's that. All right, and then we get into some actual books. So this is directly below the puzzles. These are all of the Warrior Cat books, just like the general regular series. Um, so I started collecting them all in like the pretty newer covers that form a picture, but I haven't gotten them all yet. So some of them have the old covers. And then I have like some random hardbacks that I just stuck over there. I don't know that I'll ever read these again. I kind of tried rereading them last year um, and just wasn't all that into them, but I was reading the prequels, which I feel like aren't as good as the rest of the series anyways. So I don't know. We'll see if I ever read these again, but um, I did really like them a long time ago, so. Okay, and then this shelf is some of the um, special editions for the Warrior series. So these are all the hardbacks of those that I own. Um, and then if you move over to the next shelf, we have like some of the field guides, some of the manga, novellas, and then the paperback special editions. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of books in this series. I own a lot of them. It's a problem. And then we have my favorite plant. Um, I got this at Marshall's and I just love everything about it. I also got these at um, Michael's, I think, or maybe Hobby Lobby, one of the two, but this is technically part of their like Christmas decor and I had it as part of my Christmas decorations but I really like them by themselves and I feel like they fit my boho vibe so I stuck them on the shelf. Next we have all of my Nancy Drew books. So I have a good number of the original hardbacks. I have two random library books that I probably stole in like fourth grade. Um, this is why I don't use the library very often. I am terrible at returning books. And then I have some of the newer um, paperback versions. All right, and then the next shelf, let me zoom out a little bit. So this shelf is a couple of different things. This box holds some bullet journaling supplies. These are two board games that are in like hollowed out books. And then this holds like some random um, like tarot cards and different things from fairy loot boxes that I get. They just kind of go in this box, especially if it's for a book that I haven't read yet, because then 
I just don't feel the need to put it anywhere special. Um, and then over here we have my nonfiction and memoir section. And then a random Percy Jackson book because it's the only place that it would fit. It's the tallest shelf. So I'm not going to pull out every single book that I own. But some favorites that I have on this shelf. I really love The Glass Castle. Um, Into the Wild is one of my favorites. Uh, I love Rocket Boys. Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't read a lot of nonfiction. It's just not really my thing. So that's that shelf. All right, and then we're going to go in kind of like a zigzag pattern. So directly below that is my first paranormal romance shelf. So this holds my Vampire Academy books, the Lux series, Hush Hush, Twilight. Um, this is kind of like my... It started out as my vampire shelf, and then I got Hush Hush, and that wouldn't fit on my angel shelf, so I added that. And then, you know, aliens. I didn't have an, a whole alien shelf, so that's where they ended up. Um, and then this awesome plant that I love, it's got, like, constellations on it, and it reminded me of, like, the night court, so I grabbed that. Alright, and then the next shelf is kind of a mixture. This is one of my shelves that kind of holds some overflow from some other genres where I ran out of room on that shelf. So first I have this really old camera that my, used to be my mom's and I love it. I have the Grishaverse books. I have not read those yet. Um, and they're sitting on the shelf. That's fantasy. And then the other half of the shelf is sci-fi with the Cinder series. These are just two longer series that I needed space for. So this is kind of where they ended up. All right, and then this shelf is my white paperback romance books. Um, I tried to kind of do like a highlight for each of these smaller shelves. So I have this um, mug that I got from a bookish box. It actually broke when it came in the mail. So I just kind of like turn it and then I keep fairy loop bookmarks that I get in there. And then I have To All the Boys I've Loved Before, The Summer I Turned Pretty. I still haven't gotten the third one because I really want it in the old covers, but I can't find it. I can only find the new covers. And then I have Breathe by Abby Glines. And then this shelf is all of my classics. Um, I don't read a lot of classics. Most of these I had to read for school, whether that was high school or college. Um, I have read the majority of these. I haven't read like this side. I did read Of Mice and Men. And I started of East in Eden, but other than that, I haven't really read any of these. But I've read most of these. Um, some favorites that I have, I really love a separate piece. Um, every time I tell that to people, they say that that was like their least favorite. I really like it. Um, I really like The Outsiders too. Uh, the Kite Runner was really good. Oh, uh, let's see. I didn't really care for Pride and Prejudice. I feel like that's like blasphemy to say, honestly. Also loved Island of the Blue Dolphins, Wuthering Heights, Alice in Wonderland. So yeah, these are my classics. All right, and then below that we have my other paranormal romance shelf. So this is my Angel and Mermaids and Witches shelf. Um, So I know a lot of people don't really like separate out paranormal romance as its own genre, but I do. Um, and the way I kind of, like, it just feels very different to me than regular fantasy, even fantasy that has romance in it. Like, even, like, Akatar feels really different than a paranormal romance. Um, and I don't really know why I consider Beautiful Creatures to be a paranormal romance instead of a fantasy, because it is witches, and most of my other books with witches I consider fantasy. But this is just how my brain works, so we're gonna roll with it. But um, some favorites I have on here, Ripple's really good about a siren, um, Fallen I love. I've seen like mixed reviews about it, but it's one of my favorite series. And then Unearthly I also really, really loved. And honestly, Beautiful Creatures. Beautiful Creatures, um, the third book I think is actually Beautiful Chaos. I know they're not in order, but it was more important to me to have the hardbacks on the bottom. But I think this is the third one. And it's the only book that has ever made me actually cry real tears. So also on the shelf, I have this random little plant that is supposed to be a magnet, but the magnet fell off of it. So it sits there. And then this is actually like my wand that I got from Universal when I was like 16. So that's it there. I think it's actually broken somewhere. So it just kind of. Okay. And then this shelf has two things. It has this incredible edition of Jurassic Park and The Lost World. I love these books and movies, honestly. So I was so excited when I got this book. And then this was my husband's first deer that he shot when he was like 14. I didn't know him back then, but we finally got this from his mom's house um, this past Thanksgiving. So it ended up on my bookshelf. 
Next to that is my paperback contemporary romance shelf. This is mostly contemporary romance. There's a couple historical romances on here, but I've only read like three, so they don't get their own shelf. But this is where I keep my mass market paperbacks. Um, I really want to get the rest of the Tessa Dare novels. I've listened to them all as audiobooks, but I don't own them all. Um, Safe Haven is so good. I own a lot of Nicholas Sparks books, um, mostly because both my mom and my grandmother were kind of like, like they're where I got my readingness from. Um, and my grandma had like this huge collection. She would read absolutely anything and she would just get books for like a dollar or less at all the library and book sales and thrift stores and stuff. So she just collected so many books over her life and I took all of her Nicholas Sparks books. So I have all of those. I have a lot of them in hardback too, but um, I have read most of them. The only Nicholas Sparks books I haven't read are True Believer and See Me. Also, Chasey McCree is my favorite contemporary romance of all time. JC Isabella is like not a super well-known author. I'm pretty sure this was self-published. Um, I got it off Amazon. I read it as an ebook first. I didn't even know it was ever published as a paperback and I was so excited when I found it. So I absolutely love it. Everyone should read it. It is great. Uh, let's see. Also, really love Magnolia, Enemies to Lovers. That's great. My Life Next Door and Redeeming Love is incredible. So you should also read that. Okay. And then this is honestly kind of like my least favorite shelf. This is my just like general contemporary fiction shelf i don't read a lot of this so this is the only shelf for this genre um it's not a genre that i really like all that much generally if i'm gonna read something contemporary i want it to be a romance um there are a few exceptions i really really loved wonder that one was really good if i stay was also really good i read that in like two hours on the way to the movie theater to see the movie um dog's purpose i really liked jaws i also really like because i love the movie where the heart is is one of my favorite books of all time um, Princess Academy I liked when I was a kid and Heartland I actually like the tv show better but the books are where I started so still love those all right and below that is a fantasy shelf so this started out as mostly middle grade fantasy and then I ended up adding the Iron King over there which is more of a YA but I needed a spot for it so first on the shelf we have these antlers these are from quote unquote my first year I didn't shoot it though my husband did but I was sitting next to him so he let me claim it um and then my brother-in-law spent like 45 minutes sawing these off for me broke them in half in the process but it's fine and then I bleached them so we have the Iron Fae series I have read the first two books when I was like 14 um then I never finished the series so now I have all four books in the original series I think so um, I'm planning to do a reread of those very soon. I have this little jar here that you're supposed to put pennies in, but I don't. Um, and then I have all of the Fablehaven and Dragon Watch books. I was working on getting them all in hardback, but this one I ordered a hardback from Thrift Books, but accidentally got sent another paperback. So we'll try again later. And then I have the magic books that are really good. I still need the last one though. All right, and then this is another fantasy shelf. I tried really hard not to have a genre have multiple shelves next to each other, but it didn't really work out with fantasy because I have too many fantasy shelves. So it is what it is. Um, it also really bothers me that I have like this gap here that I, it's like, it's not big enough for a decoration, but it's too big. So I do want to get the rest of this series though. So that will fix it. Um, but I do have A Curse of Dark and Lonely, which I need to read next um the cool prince which i liked sorcery of thorns and then caraval which is one of my favorite series ever and ninth house which is one of my favorite adult fantasies ever and then this is my sarah day moss shelf so i have crescent city court of thorns and roses and a court of silver flames i don't have the throne of glass books because they are still on the heart of uncertainty because i don't own all the books yet um, and then I have this little mask here that I got at Goodwill, actually. I had a mask that I got in Italy, but I think it's still at my parents' house. But when I find it, I'm going to replace it on the shelf because I think it would be really pretty. All right, and then this is my other contemporary romance shelf. These are all my hardbacks. So I have this plant that I got at Target. 
And this is actually a picture of my brother and I from like my 18th birthday, I think, which was also Easter that year. Um, and then let's see some favorites. So I have some more Nicholas Sparks books. Um, the Impossibility of Us is really, really good. Um, some more Abby Glines. Everything, everything is also really good. This was my first, second book of the month book. Um, and I liked it. It was a good Christmas read. Okay, and then on this shelf, this is like entirely Greek mythology. So I still consider this a fantasy shelf, but it is more specifically my Greek mythology shelf. So first I have this little um, patch that I really want to put on like a sweatshirt or something that I got in a fairy loot box. And then I have this little like trinket tray that I got in the same fairy loot box. Um, that came with the book Lore. This is just the dust jacket for it, for the fairy loot version. Um, I'm reading it right now, so I don't have the actual book on my shelf. But other than that, I have Circe and the Song of Achilles, which I just finished this and I absolutely loved it. Um, and those are both by Madeline Miller. The Goddess Dust was okay. And then I have all of my Rick Riordan books. These are all the Percy Jackson books. Um, that's the only series by him that I've read. I don't, I haven't read like his other series. Um, and I don't know that I really want to, but these are all my Percy Jackson books. And then another highlight shelf, I have this plant also from Marshalls, still fake. I am a plant killer. And then I have two books from um, Kathy and Brendan Reich's viral series and then their short story collection. There are five books in the series and I need to get the rest in this edition. I listened to all these as audiobooks last year and I really love this series. And then this is the first of my thriller shelves. So these are all of my hardback thrillers. Um, this is from Fairy Loot. It's like a spoon and a fork and a knife and I don't really know what to do with them. Like they, they look too nice to eat off of. So they just sit here. And then this is a spatula that I also am like, do I put this in my kitchen or does it just sit here? Like I don't really cook. So I don't really know what to do with that either. Other than that, these are all of my hardbacks for thrillers. I love thrillers. I read a ton of them. Um, always loved Mary Higgins Clark. That was where I started with thrillers. Um, I just got Good Girl, Bad Blood. I read, um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder a few weeks ago, and I just got this book, and I'm so excited to read it. Love Anything by Karen M. McManus. She is, like, perfect as far as thrillers go. Stalking Jack the Ripper is one of my favorite series. Um, again, we've got a lot more Mary Higgins Clark, some Harlan Coben, some Ruth Ware. My first, um, bookish box with a Darby Kane book. So yeah, those are really good. Okay, and then this shelf is also kind of a conglomeration of some things that didn't fit. Over here we have all of my horror books, um, but I don't read a ton of those, so I didn't need a full shelf for that. This was February's Fairy Loot Box. I don't know if it's a fantasy or a sci-fi, I can't remember. Um, so that's sitting there for now. It does have um, the really pretty sprayed edges that I really like. But this is probably going to be my next read, I think. But I've said that about, like, eight books. So we'll see. And these are some books that I got for Christmas that don't fit on their respective shelves. Um, these were too short to go on my fantasy shelf. They didn't look right. Um, so I've got them here for now. I also haven't read either of these. And then Scythe does not fit on my dystopian shelf at all. As you will see in a few minutes, it is extremely full. So for now, I haven't read any of these. So they're all just sitting here. We'll reorganize them later. Okay, so this is my middle grade shelf. So this is all just books that I read. They're like younger middle grade, elementary level books. These are really books that I read between like fourth and sixth grade, I'm thinking. Um, but these are like some of my favorites that I really liked at the time, so I didn't want to get rid of them. So they sit on this shelf. Most of these are all having to do with animals because I was obsessed. I wanted to be a vet for a very long time. Um, Betsy Tacey was one of my favorite books. Um, so was Gilda Joyce. Um, my sister and I both really loved this series. I don't even remember what the, I think this one's the first one. The name of this book is Secret. I think that's the first one. Um, Love Ruby Lavender. I read so many times that the book is just completely destroyed. Like, it is. I've read this book so many times. <laughs> and then when I read the Emily Winstead books, there were only three. And now I guess there's like eight or nine. So I almost want to reread them, but I'm afraid they're going to be too young for me now. And then this is my dystopian shelf. It is very, very full. Um, I've been 
slowly replacing older books that I had like paperback and hardback with all hardback. Um, so I did that with Divergent. So now I have the full series. I've never read Allegiant and I don't ever want to, but I do know how it ends. So there's that. The Forgetting I just read last year and it was really, really good. I love dystopian books. I'm like a sucker for like the typical like 2012 dystopian book so this fits into that perfectly and I loved it um I finally got all the Hunger Games books in hardback I used to have them in paperback haven't read the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes yet but I do need to this is my next series that I need to start replacing I only have the last one in hardback um but I love the Maze Runner there's a random hardback from the City of Ember but I have the first two in paperback but I was so out of space so they were over there same thing with the selection I couldn't fit them next to these um all of the among the hidden books I love those and then um the giver books those are really good I don't know why I never finished the testing I think only the first book was out when I first read it and I just never got around to the other ones as they came out okay and then this is my um paperback thriller section so I have this like I don't know I think it's a vase um little thing that I got from Goodwill um, but it doesn't fit here anymore because I just got a new book, so now it no longer fits. So it's a struggle. And then I have this little candle. I think I got this for our wedding. I think one of my friends stuck this in like a bag with some other stuff at our wedding. Um, and then I have um my change jar. So I'll take that off. Um, and then we have this one random book that's so much taller than the rest and then drives me nuts, but that is The Wrong Family. I listened to this as an ebook from my library, um, and I liked it enough to buy it when I saw it at Walmart. This is a horrifically beat up cover of The Lovely Bones, and I really didn't even really like this book, but I think I still gave it three stars, and I generally keep things three star or above. So, I don't know. Honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I might get rid of this one. Um, I really love You. I haven't actually seen the TV show, but I read the book and I really loved it. Um, the Wild was such a, a wild ride. Um, this was not what I was expecting at all. I loved the writing style. I know there's a lot of people, um, it's a newer book and the reviews on it were super mixed because a lot of people didn't like the writing style, but I thought it was really intriguing. Emma and the Night I have started and DNF'd twice now, but it's still here because I am determined to finish this book. So it has not made it to the card of uncertainty yet. Um, Agatha Christie is always good. Anything by Gillian Flynn is always good. I loved Allegedly. I just bought this series like this week, so I haven't read these yet, but they are on my list. Um, and then some of my mass market paperbacks. All right, and then it's really hard for me to get this last bottom shelf, so sorry about the angle. But this is another fantasy shelf. This is kind of like my random fantasy shelf. Um, there are either some paperbacks or some standalones. Um, my shorter shorter like these are all the books that are like shorter so they didn't fit on the other fantasy shelf because they were too short so they've come here um and then a lot of these are books that I started the series before the whole series finished and never looked into getting the rest of the books I don't know why but I have my copy of Game of Thrones I was really proud of myself for reading this because it was my first like true adult high fantasy um I liked it but not enough to read the rest of the series these two, I don't know why I haven't read the rest of the Aragon books. I can only, I don't know when they were published, but I can only imagine that I must have read it before they were all published and then just never got the rest. Same with Reign of Shadows. Um, I have the first two of the Alchemist series, Incarceron. I have been working my way through the first part of Lord of the Rings. I'm a little bit over halfway, but I haven't read it since like December. So I like to tell myself I'm going to finish it. Hex Hall and Demon Glass. I liked the first one. The second one was okay, and I didn't really care enough to get the third one. Uh, then I have Strange the Dreamer, which I actually really, really love this series, but it is paperback, so it didn't really fit anywhere else, so we stuck it here. But this is one of my favorite series. And then these are all just some shorter hardbacks. I haven't read this one yet. I know the second one is out now, so I don't know why I haven't read it. The Iron Thorn. Um, I've read this like six or seven times and I never bothered to read the rest of the series and I don't know why. So I need to look into that. Echo North is one of my favorite standalones for fantasy. Um, so yeah. And then my last highlight shelf. So these are kind of just like survival-esque type books, which I guess now that I'm thinking about it, um, The Wild is really a survival type book. So it should go here. But... 
now I kind of want to move it. So I moved it. And now that vase fits back on my filler shelf. So yeah, so these are all like survival type books like Hatchet and stuff. Um, I don't know why I kind of classify these as their own genre in my head, but this is a book that like is a total mood read for me. Like sometimes I just really want to read like someone getting lost in the woods and surviving. So I have like a whole shelf for it. All right, and then this is my general sci-fi shelf. Um, so I have The Host, which is one of my favorite sci-fis of all time, Contagion, and Immunity. I listen to these as audiobooks, and let me tell y'all, I listened to these as audiobooks before I discovered that you could speed them up. So I literally spent like two months reading those books, and that's the longest I have ever spent on a book in my life, and it was a ride. Um, Hunting Lila used to be one of my absolute favorite books. It's got the, um, brother's best friend trope, which is one of my absolute favorites. Um, now that I've gotten older and reread it, I've realized that, like, the plot kind of sucks, but the romance was enough to keep me reading before. Now it's less so, but it's still one of my absolute favorite, um, tropes to read. So, still, still holding on to that. Salvage was really good, uh, and then Maximum Ride. One of my favorite series of all time. Um, I think Resand has probably replaced Fang as number one love interest in my heart, but Fang was number one for like a good 15 years of my life and I'm only 23, so yeah. All right, and then the very last shelf, this is all of my, um, it's another fantasy shelf, but it's all middle grade fantasy um, and books that I don't know that I would read again. I think they're a little bit too young for me now. Um, unlike, like, Fablehaven and Magic are still middle grade, but I reread those because I still like them. Um, I probably would reread this one, though. The Dark Hills Divide. I like this series a lot. Um, but I have Spiderwick books, Kingdom Keepers. I tried to reread this, and it's way too young for me now, so probably not going to reread that one. Um, the first three Narnia books. Um, I don't have the first book to this series. I don't remember what it's called. Um, the Frog Princess, I think, but I tried to reread the series and it was also way too young for me now, so that was kind of sad. Inkheart, uh, I don't know if I've read these. I think these were my sisters. They're like, I think it's a Cinderella retelling, which was totally her thing, so. And then the Key to Rondo, we both used to really love, and A Hundred Covers. All right, y'all, that is all of my books on my bookshelf. I'm sure this will change. I'm kind of hoping to do this video like at least once a year just to kind of see how my shelves grow over time. So I'm super excited about that. But if you are intrigued by my bookshelves and want to see any other videos from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm so excited to get to know all of you. Um, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!